in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand When I trust you I don't need to understand Make me your vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing but all Bring new wine out of me In the crushing In the pressing You are making new wine In the soil I
offering Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus, bring new wine out of me Jesus, bring new wine out of me It's wonderful that you're able to join us for our prayer and devotional. Uh, my name is Drew Keir. Uh, we're on here uh, once a week for a prayer and devotional. So as I say, it's great that you're able to join us. This morning, uh, I'm going to use as a text, uh, we use a devotional uh, by Smith Wigglesworth. Uh, and this morning, if you've got that devotional, uh, you can follow me if you want to. I'm going from the date of the 24th of September. Um, why are you doing that? Because I think it's appropriate uh, to where we are at right now. We've moved into a fresh day, a fresh time and a fresh era. And just looking at this, uh, I felt this was appropriate for today. Um, so if you've not been on these um, prayer and devotionals, before I'm going to read a bit of a passage from this devotional and then we're going to pray together. So I really encourage you to get involved this morning, um, that the presence and the power of God will touch you uh, in your home, your hotel room or wherever you're at, wherever you're where wherever you are, uh, whether you're with us live or whether you're watching this on catch up, there is no time or distance in the realm of the spirit. And God wants to touch you today. Uh, today is the day of salvation. Faith is now. It's a now faith. God wants to touch your life today. And as we pray, not just your life, the people that are around about you, the people that are in your world. Jesus prayed like this, that thy kingdom come, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what we're believing for today. So he opens with a scripture uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Um, uh, the first verse, he says, for, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, uh, we have a building of God, uh, a house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Let me read it to you from the uh, TPT version. It says, we are convinced that even if these bodies uh, we live in are folded up at death like tents, we will still have a God-built home that no human hands have built, which will last forever in the heavenly realm. It's extraordinary to me that God has chosen the likes of you and I, if you're born again, to actually that we would be, as it were, the Ark of the Covenant, the, the tabernacle of God. We would carry God's presence, carry God's power and his presence into a lost and a hurting world. God is love and he wants to flow through us. So let me read through a, a little bit of this this morning and we'll pray. He encourages us to look at uh, Revelation, the third chapter, and I'm going to take some snippets out of that this morning. It says the power of God can so dwell in us that it can burn up everything that is that is not spiritual and dissolve it to the perfection of beauty and holiness that Jesus has. Jesus was perfectly dissolved in regard to everything in his human nature and he lived in the spirit over everything else as he is so are we in this world according to 1 John 4 17. These are scriptural truths that God has made available to us. It, 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 it is amazing. Many of you on this broadcast, uh, your, your hunger and desire is for more of God. My personal hunger and desire is to see more of God move through our, our lives. 
And I believe that this is the key uh, or one of the keys as we exercise faith in what God has to say. Let me read on. We shouldn't be troubled in the flesh. Was Jesus troubled in the flesh? Did he go forth with perfect victory? It is possible for any it it is impossible for any avenue of of flesh or anything that you touch in your natural body to be helpful. What he's saying is this. It doesn't matter how gifted you are. Uh, it's God wanting to live through you and live through those giftings. Even your eyes have to be sanctified by the power of God so that they strike fire every time you look at a sinner and the sinner will be changed. I think that's a great point of prayer, uh, that that our, our eyes would start to reflect the one who lives in us. Greater is he that is in me, the Bible says, than he that is in the world. If you're born again, born of the Spirit of God, Christ is now being formed in your heart through faith. And God wants to live through you. Father, we come before you this morning and we surrender our lives before you. We ask, Lord, let our eyes be like flames of fire. Lord, as your presence, as your love, as your goodness starts to flow through us. We pray, Lord God, that people would start to see you through us. Lord, that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, that you would come and that you would flood this temple. And let it be, Lord, to your glory and to your honour and to your praise. Father, we pray that your love would start to flow through us, that we would look at people, Lord, through the eyes of love, that we would look at people through the eyes of holiness, through the eyes of purity. Father, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us, Lord, where we've been judgmental and critical over people. Father, give us your love for people and let it flow through us as fire in Jesus' precious name. Let, let me read on. And it says this, we will be clothed with a robe of righteousness in God so that wherever we walk, there will be a whiteness, <laughs> a whiteness of effectiveness that will bring people to a place of conviction of sin. The, the Bible says this, that the Holy Spirit, to those that that know God, to those that are born again, that he will convict us of righteousness. In other words, if we stray away from, from what doing what is right in God's sight, the Holy Spirit will convict us uh, and say to us, hey, come on, Drew, you know, that, that's, not, that's not what I designed you for. And we come back. But the Bible also says that the Holy Spirit will convict the sinner of sin. Uh, and, and I pray that today, we pray today that, that conviction, Lord, would be in us, but God, that conviction would also live through us uh, and around about our lives, that the conviction of sin, Lord, would start to touch people around about our lives. Father, we're asking this for the advancing of your kingdom in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. It's not that, you know, the sinner should feel uncomfortable, as it were, in a way around you, in a way, but in another way that the sinner would feel very comfortable with you. And it's like I can, I, I it's, it's like when, when the sinner is around you, it's like I feel I can trust you. I feel I can share different things with you. I feel I can unburden with you. Uh, that many mighty men and women of God that we read about in the past, that just where they were, and people around them would just start to suddenly weep and, and say, I need to get my life right with God. Uh, not because they had a not not because they had some big cross hanging round their neck or something like that. It was the very presence and power of God flowing through their lives. 
Guys, I want to say to you today, God wants to do this through every single person who is truly born of God. Those that are walking with God. And I believe that the keys to these things, that the, the truth of these things uh, is in this devotional this morning. Uh, let me read on. You say there are so many things in my house that would have to be thrown out uh, of the window if Jesus came to my home. That's a challenge for all of us, I think. I pray that we, we that we could understand that he is already in the house all the time. Everything ought to go out the window that couldn't stand his eyes being on it. Every impression of our hearts that would bring trouble if he looked at us ought to, to go forever. Father, we, we just thank you, Lord God, that, that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, but our homes, Lord, would be an embassy of heaven. Lord, a place where heaven would manifest. Lord, we declare that our homes are holy ground. And Lord, if there is anything in our homes, anything in this, anything in this temple, first and foremost, Lord, that is, that is abhorrent to you, that, that, needs, that needs to go, any heart attitude that I have that's not right, Lord, any mindset that I have that's, that doesn't align with your word, I pray, Lord, that your conviction would come and your grace would come that would allow me to let go of those things. Come on, pray with me today. Allow God to come today. You know, God is for you. And since God is for you, who can be against you? There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk according to the spirit. But listen, if you walk according to the flesh, uh, and God doesn't want you walking according to the flesh. Amen. The flesh is being dissolved. Come with people who walk in the spirit. So allow his conviction to come. Father, we just thank you today. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Come on, the blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus Christ to wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And we thank you, Lord God, that I've been loosed of sin by the precious blood of Jesus. The Bible says this, that he's justified us by his blood. And right now, I thank you, Lord, for the flow of your blood washing over each and every one of us, cleansing us and washing us from the past. The Bible says this, his mercies are afresh and anew every morning. And we thank you, Lord, that they are. Thank you, Lord God, that you're dealing with yesterday through the blood of Jesus and that I can walk in freedom and liberty. Lord, would you come and flood this body? Lord, would you come and flood my home with your presence? And help me, Lord God, if there is anything there that is abhorrent to you, I ask, Lord God, that, that, that I would remove it in, in Jesus' precious, precious name. The other day I was, I was ministering in the church and I said, guys, this is a time where our house needs to be like an embassy of heaven. Uh, uh, and I said, and why don't you go home tonight, open the doors and open the windows. If there's anything of a uh, uh, of a wicked nature there, anything that's trying to disrupt the peace of God in your life, to open the windows uh, and, and tell that thing to get out in Jesus' name. If there's any strife, contention and confusion in your house, take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Kick it out. There's no place in my home in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Uh, and God will show you the things that you need to remove uh, from your household in Jesus' name. Let, let, let's, read, let's read on. I pray that you could understand that he is already in my in your in your house. Everything ought to be go out of the window um, that can't stand his eyes to be upon it. Every impression of our hearts that would bring trouble if we looked at it as if he looked at us ought to be gone forever. You ask, what what are we to do? We are to be swallowed up by life. Second Corinthians 5, 4 says this. The great I am in perfect holiness isn't just an example, but he clothes us with his nature. 
It is impossible for us to subdue kingdoms, according to Hebrews 11.33, which is what we're meant to be doing. Impossible for the greater works to be accomplished through us, John 14.12. Impossible for the Son of God to be making sons on the earth, except as we stand exactly in his place. And then there's a thought for the day here. There isn't a place in scripture that God doesn't mean for us to possess and which he won't take, that he won't take us into. God wants to take us into realms of his presence and power that his glory presence would start to flow through us. It's time for light to start flowing through you and I in a fresh and a new way. God is light. God is love. He is glory. And that glory wants to live in and through you and I. Revelation chapter, chapter 3 verse 8 says this. It says, for I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. You have kept my word and have not denied my name. There is an open door. His name is Jesus. Uh, and Father, we just come. We come through that open door, Lord God, today. We surrender our lives today. Lord, you are the truth. Lord, you are, you are the way. Lord, that open door, the way into the Father. You are the truth. And Lord, our desire is to live in truth. And you are the life. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that your life would start to flow through each and every one of us. Father, we just thank you for it. We praise you for it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let me read verse 20 to you. It's an extraordinary verse. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. God wants to dine with you. Come on, would you open the door of your heart today? But let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We open the door of our heart to you today. And we ask, Lord, that you would come and that you would flood us with your love, that you would flood us with your goodness, Lord. I fling wide the doors of my heart today. And God, I pray that you would come and flood me in a fresh and a new way, almighty God, that out of my innermost being would start to flow rivers of living water, Rivers, rivers of your presence and rivers of your power. God wants to fill you and I today to overflowing, to, to overflowing with such a joy, with such peace as you exercise faith today. Faith in what Jesus has done. Come on, some of you on this broadcast, you're trying to do this by your own efforts. No, believe. He says, believe in me. Believe that I've done it for you and then you can receive. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you today as we open the doors of our heart. We thank you, Lord God, that you would come in. Lord, that you that you live in us. But God, we, we ask you, Lord, would you live through us to touch a lost and a hurting world? Lord, that your love would start to flow through us. Your glory would start to flow through us. Your life would start to flow through us. Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. In the wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus, the Bible says this, Mark chapter 11, verse 23, 24 and 24. He says this, whatever you ask, whatever you ask, believe that you receive it and you'll have it. So listen, God wants to give you a measure today. Amen, they say. God wants to give you a measure today. So take the measure God wants to give you uh, and ask him for a fresh measure for tomorrow. And that's how you build a life. And God wants to build you. He wants to build such an atmosphere around about your life. Lord, that angels would be ascending and descending because you're carrying an open heaven because of Christ in you. Uh, these are extraordinary truths that you can live out of this this place where earth, where where as it is in heaven, starts to manifest in and around about your life. Come on, God has done this in the past and he wants to do it again. But this time he wants to do it again through every believing believer. 
Uh, just say, that's me. I'm a believing believer. Lord, purge out of me any form of unbelief, anything that would stand in your way, God. Purge it out of me today. Let your fire and your glory come, Lord, and dwell in me and dwell through me in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Have a great day and know that the promises in this book are for those that believe, those that have invited Jesus Christ into their life. You can start to claim these precious, precious promises because they're there for you and I in Jesus name. Now, listen, I'll close with this. If anybody's on this broadcast, you've never invited Jesus into your life. You may know about him. You may go to church, but have you invited into your life? Say this simple prayer with me, Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. I ask you to come into my life, to be my Lord and to be my saviour. I turn to you today. I turn away from the things of this world and I turn to you. Come and dwell in my life and I will walk with you and talk with you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, why don't you send us an email, connect at coastlands.church, uh, uh, and we'll get back to you. We want to help you. We want to empower you and enable you to live in the greatest adventure that mankind can ever, can ever have on this earth. And then when the, the day you leave, the day you go to glory, the day you leave, the day you exit the planet, and we all will, uh, you'll be going straight into the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah, because you'll already know him because you've been walking with him. Have a blessed day. Have a great day. See you.